In this video, I'll show you how to complete probability calculations using a Punnett square. In these examples, we will focus on cystic fibrosis. Cystic fibrosis is associated with the CFTR gene that encodes a protein that helps thin the mucus lining of the lungs. The dominant allele of this gene, let's call it big A, codes for a functional protein, and the recessive allele, let's call it little a, codes for a non-functional protein. So in this case, a person with the genotypes big A big A or big A little a will not have cystic fibrosis because they will have a protein that helps thin the mucus lining in their lungs. And a person who is homozygous recessive will have cystic fibrosis, a disease characterized by thick, sticky mucus buildup in the lungs, which compromises air pathways. So let's say you have two parents that want to know the probability of their child having the disease cystic fibrosis. Both parents are heterozygous, meaning they each are carriers for the cystic fibrosis little a allele. You create a Punnett square with the possible gametes of the parents at the head of the columns and rows. Here are the father's possible sperm, and here are the mother's possible eggs. You can see that they both could give their big A allele or their little a allele to their child. So we fill in the boxes and see all of the possible genotype combinations for the child. A doctor can see that only one box contains the genotype associated with cystic fibrosis, little a, little a. And we can go back to the parents and say, you have a 25% chance of having a child with cystic fibrosis. These other three boxes all contain possible genotypes that result in a child without cystic fibrosis. What is useful in a Punnett square is that we can add the probabilities from each of these boxes, one-fourth and one-fourth, to say that the parents have a one-half or 50% chance of having a heterozygous genotype child. To make that calculation, we just used the rule of addition. When you have two mutually exclusive events, which means that they cannot happen together at the same time, the probability of either one or the other happening can be calculated by adding their individual probabilities together. So here we see that there are three possible gamete combinations that will result in a child having a phenotype without cystic fibrosis. The probability of this happening or this happening, or this happening, is equal to the sum of the probabilities of each individual event, or 1 fourth plus 1 fourth plus 1 fourth. So anytime you're asking, what is the probability of this or this happening, you know that you'll be adding those probabilities together. So in this case, the parents have a 75% chance of having a child without cystic fibrosis. Now what if I were to ask what is the probability of this couple having a child with cystic fibrosis and then a child without cystic fibrosis? This requires the rule of multiplication, which tells us that the probability of this event happening and this event happening is equal to the probability of this event multiplied by the probability of this event. So in this case, we know that the probability of having a child with cystic fibrosis is one-fourth, and the probability of having a child without cystic fibrosis is three-fourths. So by rule of multiplication, the probability of having a child with cystic fibrosis and then a child without cystic fibrosis is one-fourth times three-fourths, which is three-sixteenths, or 18.75%. All of these same rules apply when the parents have different genotypes. For example, if we have a mother with cystic fibrosis and a father who is heterozygous, we can complete a Punnett square and see that they have a 50% chance of having a child with cystic fibrosis and a 50% chance of having a child without cystic fibrosis. To get these percentages, I used the rule of addition to add together the probabilities of these two boxes with the little a, little a cystic fibrosis genotype 1 quarter plus 1 quarter, which is 1 half or 50%. The same math applies for these two boxes. 
If I ask what the probability is that they have two children with cystic fibrosis, that question is asking what the probability is that they have a child with cystic fibrosis and then another child with cystic fibrosis. So I would multiply these probabilities together, one half times one half, which is one fourth or 25%. That is their probability of having two children with cystic fibrosis. So that's how we use a Punnett square and the rules of multiplication and addition to calculate questions of probability. If you want to take it a step further, see my video on two gene Punnett squares. If you want to learn how to use this Punnett square math to help you read a pedigree, you should check out my video on pedigrees.